Amen. God bless your hearts today. We want to once again welcome you to the discipleship study on the major Bible themes. The major Bible themes. And we're going to uh, pick up on page 120. And last uh, lesson, we dealt with quench not the spirit. Y'all remember that? Quench not the Holy Ghost. And so today we're going to look at grieve not the what? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, our text is going to come from Ephesians 4 and 30. Ephesians 4 and 30. You want to sit up where you can see? A little, you know. Ephesians 4. Let's get closer. You can sit on the front row here for you can see me, Brother Johnson. Right? Right there. All right? Is that better? Amen? Okay. Ephesians 4 and 30 reads, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are what? Sealed. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen, man. Knights of faith, soldiers of the cross, uh, how do I avoid grieving the Holy Spirit? Sister Jeter, what can I do to, to avoid this? You know, when you look at that, okay, uh, you can't overcome sin without the Holy Spirit. There's no way to overcome sin without the what? The Holy Spirit. It's important how we respond when he speaks to us. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you have to respond. Amen? We have to respond. I'm doing an intro right now before I get into the book. So you're not going to see it right now. Okay? See, we live, and we know this, we live in a fast-paced society, don't we, church? Ma'am. Don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a, and, and many of us have a fast-paced lifestyle. Right? We got fast travel now. Okay? We have fast mass communication. We have fast access to a wealth of information uh, that, again, that, that set my mind on the things of the Spirit, that, that will take your mind away from the things of the Spirit. Why? Because everything is such a fast pace, you know? And so, therefore, not being able to hear with that fast pace, a lot of us don't take our time to hear the small, amen, still voice of God. Why? Because we're always in a hurry. Amen. Okay? Lifestyle's in a hurry. Travel is in a hurry. Communication is in a hurry. And we just have so much information. We got Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, you know. So we don't have time to what? To really be still, okay? Take a quiet time to pray. All right? And hear God's still small voice. Okay? Now note this. When do when I do not listen to him, I end up grieving the Holy Spirit. When you don't listen to him, when you don't hear that still small voice, you and I wind up grieving the Holy Spirit. All right? Uh, so much to tell uh, me about, well, you know, bring me the joy. Well, when we do that, when we listen to him, it brings us joy, doesn't it? When you listen to the Holy Ghost, it brings you happiness. And it leads you to a life of freedom from sin and self. The major problem with us is that we get involved with sin and self. That's the problem, okay? Sin and what? Sin. And self. A lot of us are egotistical. A lot of us are, are selfish. Amen. 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 And with that, we don't have time to sit and listen for that still, small voice. Grieving the Holy Spirit by, how do you grieve him, Sister Gina? By disobedience. How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? We grieve the Holy Spirit by being disobedient. To the Spirit. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the what? The helper. Amen. Amen. 
That's what Jesus called, Brother Johnson. Mm -hmm. He called the Holy Spirit. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the helper. Amen. John 16 and 13. And St. John 16 and 13. It basically says, when he, the Holy Spirit, or when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he says, he will guide you unto all truth. That's your helper. Amen. See? And I need help. Amen? Me too. Anybody else? Man. Me too. I need help. And so here John writes and let us know in 16 and 13, he gives us a foundational work. When he, he who, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you unto all truths. Amen? Ma'am. So, all we need to do is follow the footsteps of Jesus because I cannot find the way by myself. I can't find the way by myself. Ma'am. I get lost. I get lost in my own selfishness. I get lost in my own pride. I get lost in my own ego. I get lost in my own self-assurance. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And some of us get lost in our own righteousness. Ma'am. So, therefore, the thing of it is, is that we have to follow after the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only way. Amen? Man. The Spirit will never force me. He wants to lead me into a life of victory. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, He wants to lead you into a life of victory. But He can only, Brother Bryant, lead you to the life of victory if you're able to be still mm -hmm. and hear the still Voice. small voice because there's so much traffic out there yes, God. there's so many people bombarding you yes okay so you're going to need that time to yourself that quiet time with the law amen and i'm sure that each of you have a period mm -hmm. maybe you do it in the morning maybe you do it late at night some of y'all may do it during the midday i don't know but you got to have some time during the day where you sit and listen to what the lord has to say amen just like you put out time to watch TV or read the newspaper or chat on the phone with the friends. How often do you take out time to chat with the Lord? You must put that time away. Block out that time for your own self. Amen? Man. Jesus even asked the disciples, can you, not, can you not pray with me for just one hour? Just give me what? One hour. Just give me one hour. And many of us don't want to give God one hour. But the Lord is asking, give me one hour. Because in giving us one hour, and then the Spirit, who's not going to force himself on you, but he wants to lead you to a life of victory. Amen? The Holy Ghost wants to lead you to a life of what? Victory. He wants to lead you out of crack cocaine. He wants to lead you out of prostitution. He wants to lead you out of lying. He wants to lead you out of murdering. He wants to lead you out of backbiting. He wants to lead you what? Out of it. Basically, Brother Johnson, he want to lead us out of darkness Amen. into the what? The marvelous light. Marvelous light. Amen. So with that, and allowing him to give us victory, life and happiness must be fulfilling. Amen. And we have an access road to an overcoming life. So I become an overcomer. I have an access. That spirit of God is what? Is an access. Have you ever been on the freeway and it's crowded and they give you an access road? Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that when you drive down the freeway, there's a road that's parallel and the freeway, they just, they just move it real fast. And you wonder, how come I didn't get on that what? On that road. Amen? Well, that's the way it is in life. The Holy Spirit have an access road for us to travel on. Amen? But you've got to travel that road in spirit and in truth. you got to travel that road in prayer and meditation. you got to travel that road in constant communication with God. Ma'am. you got to travel that road allowing God to be the leader. Don't you get on that road thing now. You're going to give directions. No. You have to continue to allow God's spirit as a believer to lead you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And to lead what? Me. Because... He is the one, Sister Jeter, once we allow God to lead us, 
will take us through many dangers, toils, and snares. Because life's going to give you that. Life's going to give you many dangers. You're going to go many toils. And snares are what? Everywhere. Amen. But grace be to God and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will help you have access to a road where you can become an overcomer in your life. Amen. Amen. I grieve the Holy Spirit by not allowing myself to be led, but choosing my own way instead. I grieve the Holy Spirit when I don't choose his way. Amen. Amen. And a lot Amen. of us have gone our own way. I'm guilty. I've gone my own way. Okay. And I've discovered that in going my own way, it leads to a dead end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Have you noticed your way lead to a dead end? Yes, sir. Huh? Every time. Every time. Yes. Oh, you can be an excellent planner, an excellent tactician, amen, an excellent strategist. Every time. That's all good, don't you say? Every time. Definitely be that. But there's an element of victory that you want in it. Our element of victory as a believer is allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us. A pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I, I believe that God will give us the victory every time. Amen. So if you're in a spot that you don't want to be in, follow the Spirit of God. That's not a slogan. That's a reality. Because there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. Amen. 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 And so with that, <coughs> God gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey him. How are you going to get the Spirit of God when you obey him? You want God's Spirit, son? Obey him. Amen. Do what? Obey him. The Holy Spirit and the flesh are in total opposition to each other. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the what? And the flesh is in total opposition. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the flesh is in total opposition. So therefore, those who give themselves to over to the Spirit are obedient to God. God can better lead us down the road of overcoming. Mm -hmm. Do that make sense? What do y'all think about that? That makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the truth. Amen? Look at Ephesians 4 and 30. And it's part of our text. But I want you to look at Ephesians 30 and, and then look at 31. Mm -hmm. I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God Whereby ye are sealed until the day of what? Redemption. He says, now what, what's going to happen, Sister Gina? He says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed by uh, until the day of redemption. You're sealed until the day of redeem. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 31. Let all bitterness. Amen. See that? Mm -hmm. All what? Wrath mm -hmm. and anger. Mm -hmm. And what? Clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. He said, get rid of that stuff. Amen. 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 And 32 picks up and says, and be ye kind, oh, help me somebody, one to another. To another. Right. Tender hearted. Right. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ma'am. You can't start over if you don't forgive. Right. Amen, ma'am. You, you, you're going to be a miserable soul. Amen. Many people right now, you mad at somebody. You've been mad at them for years. And they sitting even staking lobster. Ain't even thinking about you. Why? Because you sitting here eating up. And they ain't bit more thinking about you than a man on the moon. Amen? And when you see them, you want to remind them of your pain. 
And they said, uh-huh. You finished? Now let me go back and eat me some more steak and lobster. And that makes you madder because they're not upset like you are. Well, you have to learn to let all bitterness go. Turn it loose. Rat, I won't get him for getting me. <laughs> let it go. Amen? That's why the penitentiaries are full right now. Some folk couldn't what? Let it go. Let it go. That's why the graveyards are full right now. Because people could not what? Let it, let it go. Some things you just have to what? Let it go. You keep all this stuff inside of you. It, it tears you up. It, it's and a it cancer. You older because you, you got all that hate in you. You got all that hate. It's a cancer. It's a cancer. It eats yeah. you up. And God is saying, Brother Johnson, yeah. let it go. Give the element of forgiveness before you can move forward. But those people that don't forgive you, when they see you, they want to remind you what you've done. And they kick because you done forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. Amen? You live in that nightmare by yourself. I've been redeemed. Amen? Oh, they hate that. Well, you can't be redeemed because what you did to me, God's going to get you. God is not going to get me for you. Amen. Please. Amen. Amen. Listen. He died on the cross for what I done. Amen. He died on the cross for what you done. Listen. Now what God don't want, he don't want us to continue in that sin. Say amen. Amen. He doesn't want us to continue in that what? Amen. In that sin. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to say or uh, uh, treat it as though we got away with something. Amen. No. No. You done it. <coughs> you confess your sins. He's faithful and just. To forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all what? Unrighteousness. And with that forgiveness, you can have a new birth. Amen. You can have a new life. You don't have to live in guilt and shame. Amen. See? And if people knew this, they would be more free. If people, if, if people really leave by this, the psychiatrist would be ran out of business. This very text right here will run the psychiatrist out of business. This very text right here will run the therapist out of business if you turn it over to Jesus. Amen. Why? Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Turn it away. Then he says, and be ye kind, what? One to another. It's just nice to be nice. Amen? Be tender-hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, look at this here. Uh, back in the 40s, we hated Japan. America did. I wasn't born. But they hated Japan. Am I right about it? Amen. Huh? They had concentration camp for the Japanese. Right about it? They hated the people of Germany. Amen? Now they're the best of friends. America and Germany are partners today. They learned to what? Forgive. And they was able to build something. So you can build something when you forgive. Mom. But you can't build a thing if you keep malice. Amen. Yes, Sister Amen. Jeep. <laughs> I might be being snappy, but did they really learn to love one another or did it just turn into good politics? It's good politics. Amen. Did they, it's good it's good business. Yeah, learn to love. It's, yeah. It's That's, good it's did good they business. learn to love. You know what I mean? It's definitely good <laughs> it's good business. Yeah. You know? Because good Japan business. was a destroyed city. Mm -hmm. But now it's one of the economic powers of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so with that. I, that, I said that to say that we can do the same thing as individuals. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Amen? Right. Amen. And good politics, good Christian, we can do the, be the same thing as what? Individuals. Amen? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, quarreling, and evil speaking be put away from you and malice. I grieve the Holy Spirit by not obeying him. 
Amen. If I don't obey the Holy Spirit, Brother Johnson. Amen. I grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay. So with that, you want to overcome sin by the Holy Spirit. To overcome sin, Sister Jackson, by the Holy Spirit. Good news is that the Holy Spirit is also one who also gives me power to obey and power to overcome all these tendencies Amen. in my nature. Amen. The Holy Spirit. He's the only one. He gives me power. Amen. To obey. He gives me power to overcome these tendencies in my nature. My nature to disobey. Okay? Mm -hmm. And God sees my sincere desire to obey him. When God sees, Brother Bryant, your sincere desire to obey him, mm -hmm. he will send the Holy Spirit to help you, to help me, amen? Amen. To do just that. But you got to have a sincere desire to do it, amen? amen. Not a show, okay? Amen. I'm just going to do it Sunday amen. from 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be a Christian for 11 to 1, all right? But this is a lifestyle. I, I want to be one yes, yes. each and every what? Day. day. Each and every day. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And look what Jesus, Jesus told his disciples they would receive power when the Holy Ghost had come upon them. Amen. He said, you know what, fellas? Uh, there's a lot going on, but guess what? You're going to receive power mm -hmm. when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay. And so, when you look at that, Sister Jeter, just like a thirsty person in the desert who drinks deeply from a spring, fresh well of water, I must have a deepliness in God to drink from the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, you ever got thirsty? Back in Texas, when I was out there in the watermelon patch, mm. cutting them watermelons, it was hot out there, no water. Because the truck was over there, you had to wait, huh? And uh, we went over to the truck, and back then they had them coolers and them tin coolers. I don't know how that water stayed cold, but it was nice and cold, and you just and you been out that sun, and you say, oh, oh, that's good, amen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how your soul feels yes, when you allow yourself yes. to drink of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It refreshes. That spiritual woman, it refreshes that spiritual man. Why? You fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. And if you want to, 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 to line up, amen, with the elements of abundance of life, just like that thirsty man in the desert, then you also want to drink of the Holy Ghost. No. That's why some of y'all can't wait to get to church and praise his holy name. You can't wait to get to prayer meet while you're thirsty. Amen. I'm thirsty for his word. Huh? I'm thirsty to praise him. Huh? I'm thirsty for the Lord. And that's the way you got to be. So just, um, when I think about it, as I said, getting to know the Lord, the character of the Lord, and knowing what he's all about is just, um, awesome. It's, yeah, I can't think of that's that a, word. That's right the word. I mean, Pastor Johnson. Yeah. Then awesome. getting what? to know him. It's just awesome. Mm. And that song said, falling in love with Jesus, Jesus. is the best thing I've ever, ever done. There's a lot of things you may have done, but falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, what? I've Amen. Ever done. Amen. So God's spirit is in his word. Amen. And as you drink deeply of the foundation of, of the spirit of faith that is in his word. You got to drink deeply of the what? The spirit of faith. Nah. Blessed are those that what? Thirst after righteousness. Amen. You got to thirst after righteousness. Amen. So I grieve the Holy Spirit by wandering around in the desert on my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And ways are too busy. I'm too lazy to drink from the foundation of faith uh, and the power that is in God's word. I grieve the Holy Spirit by wandering around in the desert. The desert of what? The desert of my own thoughts. 
That's what's wrong with a lot of us. We wander in the desert of our own thoughts. Amen. Amen. And the ways, our ways are too busy and, and we're too lazy. Amen. But you have to drink from the fountain of faith. You got to drink from the what? The fountain of faith. Amen. And the power that is in God's word. There's power in the name of Jesus. The song says, power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Breaks every chain. And does. It breaks every chain. It breaks what? Every chain. Not some chains. But it breaks what? Every chain. But grieving the Holy Spirit is totally necessary. But grieving the Holy Spirit is what? Totally necessary. Don't do it. Don't grieve his what? His spirit. Let's look at Romans 8. Close with that thought on this intro that I have for you. And then we're going to get into the text and to the lesson. Romans 8. Romans 8. And 26 and 27. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have it, say amen. Amen. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm -hmm. Didn't say that? Yes. Amen. For we know not what we should pray for right. as we ought. Right, right. But the Spirit yes. itself make an intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Amen. 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 And he that, what? Searches. Searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yes. That's good news. Yeah, Amen. I said that's what? That's good news. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit of God also helpeth in our infirmities. He knows that we short. He knows that I'm short. Yeah. Yeah. For all of sin and come what? Short. short of the glory of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, for we know not what we should pray for right. as we are. Some of us, you see, people say, "Well, I don't know. I don't know what. To, I don't know how to pray." Don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit will make intercession for you. Amen. Just like. Uh, Pastor Renee, when we're singing, a lot of us may forget the words and she'll speak them out. Ma'am. See? To help us catch on board. Huh? Well, that's what the Holy Ghost does. Oh, Amen. You said you're yeah. talking to the Lord and you don't know what all to say. The Holy Spirit will speak it out for that's you. Right. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you. For God to get the intent yeah. of what you want. See? So don't worry about it if you you're not an elegant speaker. An elegant prayer, you know. Now, Lord, now, Lord, now, Lord. No, you don't have to do all that. Come on. Now, if you do it, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Say amen. Amen. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you just know how to just wave your hand. Yes. And know from your desires of your heart, the Holy Spirit will what? Intercede. Yes. Isn't that what the word of God saying? Yes. Am I making this up? Yes. Or is it in the word? Yes. And it says that not only that, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groaning and which cannot be uttered. You may not be able to say nothing. Ma'am. But he'll take your intent to the God. Thank you. He'll take your desires to the Holy Ghost. Jesus. He'll take your, your meaning to Jehovah Jireh. Amen? Amen. And there it lets you know you. that it's guaranteed that God will answer and hear your prayer. And that search it the heart, knowing what is in the mind of the spirit. Yes, He's gonna search your heart. Okay. The intercessions of your heart. Amen. Because he make an intercession for the saints. That's us. According to the will of God. And it be within God's will. And whatever God's wills, it occurs. Amen. I said, whatever God wills, it occurs. Amen. He said, let there be light. There that was his will. And it was. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Huh? He said, let me separate the darkness from the light. And it was. That was his will. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He looked at the ground and saw clay and he formed man. That was his will. And it was. And it was. Mm -hmm. He spoke something into nothing. Mm -hmm. 
that was his will and it wasn't and it was. Ma'am. So if he can do all that, he can very easily with the intent of my heart bring about the answer to my prayer within yeah. his will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll line it up. Say that, Pastor. With what he wants. That's right. And it's gonna benefit That's right. you and I. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Brother Glass didn't write that. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Amen. That's a foundational something that believers you can stand on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God teaches there is a reality yes, it is. in serving a true and a living God. Amen? Ma'am. So then we all truly experience a comfort mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit as well as his power. I experience his power. Ma'am. Amen? So this quench not the Holy Spirit. Are y'all with me? Yes. Now we're going to pick up on the book. Pick up on the book on page 120. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Number two, in connection with the filling of the Spirit, a believer is also ex 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 exhorted to grieve not the Holy Spirit. And it says in Ephesians 4 and 30, it says, Here it is, presume that sin has entered into the life of the Christian and yieldness, unyieldness has become a fact of his experience. You no longer yield to the Lord. Amen? You're now yielding to temptation. Okay? In order to enter into a state of being filled with the Spirit or to return to such a state, he is exhorted not to continue in his sin which grieves the Holy Spirit. Don't continue in that. Stop it. And when the Spirit of God is grieved in a believer, a follower, and guidance of instruction and power of the Spirit is what? Hindered. See, if you grieve God's Spirit, you're going to hinder the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to hinder God's power. Not in my life. Anybody want to hinder God's power in your life? No, don't hinder it in what? Don't hinder it in your life. The Holy Spirit, although indwelling, is not free to accomplish His work in the life of a believer. He can't accomplish what he wants in your life if you quench it. He can't accomplish what you have in your life if you grieve him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Experiences of the fullness or the fulling of the spirit may be affected by physical condition. A Christian who is physically tired, hungry, or sick may not be experiencing the normal joy and peace which the fruit of the Spirit, quite naturally, mm -hmm. right? The same apostle who spoke of being filled with the Spirit confessed in 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9 that he was what? Pressed, Pressed out, out of measure. Pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we what? Despair. Even life. Even life. See? He had gotten beaten down. Accordingly, even as a Christian is filled with the Spirit, may experience some what? In a turmoil. We're going to have that sometimes, Sister Pastor. We're going to have in a turmoil. It, 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 it occurs. Okay? You're going to have what? In a turmoil. But the greater need is in a believer's what? Circumstance. However, the greater the need for filling of the Spirit by yieldness to the will of God that the power of the Spirit may be what? Manifested in the individual life. Show the power of God no matter what you're going through. Don't let, dev don't let the devil steal your joy. Oh, you're not going to I may cry sometime, but I'm going I'm to wipe my tears and say hallelujah. Amen. Ma'am. I'm going to wipe my tears and say, praise his holy name. Yes, God. I'm going to wipe my tears and say, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Y'all hear me? Ma'am. Yeah. So, when a Christian becomes conscious of the fact that he has grieved the Holy Spirit, 
The remedy is to stop grieving the spirit. That's just that simple, isn't it? You know, Sister Gina, that you grieve the Holy Ghost, stop doing it. Amen. As Ephesians 4.30 means literally translated, this can be accomplished by obeying. How can I stop grieving him, Pastor? Obey him. Amen. How can you do it? By what? Obeying him. 1 John 1 and 9. What did it say? 1 John 1. 1 and 9. If we confess that is. our that? sins, uh -huh. <clears throat> he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Mm -hmm. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There it is right there. That's how you get back on track with the Holy Ghost. That's how you get back on track with God, Brother Johnson. Amen? That's how you get back on track on your life. If you feel that your life has been derailed, he says, if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You can go to heaven right now. Tap your hell ticket. Amen? And say, devil, I'm on my way to heaven. Amen? You can condemn me for my sins, but God does not condemn me for my sins. Huh? He's forgiven you. And based on the fact that he's forgiven you, how? Because you have confessed your sins. Not to the judge downtown in the courthouse. Amen? Amen. You know, not to a crowd of people, but you confessed it to Almighty God. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. Amen. And he said, when you've done that, he's faithful and just Hallelujah. to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you and to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. And that'll put you in there. Amen? amen. That'll give you the key to the pearly gate. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And if we say that we are not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So, I've done wrong, Brother Johnson. I've sinned. Amen. And I think that I have an advocate. I have somebody, Sister Jeter. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. That have intercede for me. See, the passage refers to a child of God who has sinned against his heavenly father. The way, to the way to restoration is to op is open because the death of Christ is sufficient for all of his sin. Christ's death was sufficient for every sin I committed. Amen. This is my way back to God. Amen. Thus the way back and to fellowship with God for a believer is to confess his sins to God, recognizing anew the basis for the for the forgiveness and the death of Christ and desiring restoration and the intimate fellowship with God, the Father, as well as the Holy Spirit. I want that intimate relationship Hallelujah. with him. Amen? Hallelujah. With God. Hallelujah. The thing it is, is that the flesh, our flesh, is what keeps us, like I said, the flesh is in opposition to the Holy Spirit. The flesh is. This flesh likes stuff. Yeah. Amen? Man. Yeah, this flesh takes over. It don't like to be too hot. It don't like to be too cold. <laughs> likes things just right. Say amen. Amen. Like to do things its own way. It likes to do, <laughs> the flesh like doing things its own way. Amen? Right? And so the passage assures that God is faithful and just to forgive sin and to remove it as a barrier to the fellowship when a Christian sincerely confesses his wrongdoing to God. It's a barrier. You know that crack cocaine is a barrier. You know that lying is a barrier. You know that murder is a barrier. You know that fornication is a barrier. You know that adultery is a barrier between you and God. The Holy Spirit helps you to eliminate that barrier. Once you give yourself over to God, while in some instances confessing of sin may require going to an individual who has been wronged 
and correcting the difficulties. The main idea is establishing a new intimate relationship with God himself. Okay, if you wrong somebody, there's nothing wrong with going to say, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Will you forgive me? Amen. Yes. And that individual may say, yes, I do. Or they may say, hell no, I ain't going to forgive you. Well, guess what? It's okay. Right. Because you've done what's required. Because you've done what was required of you. Amen. So you don't have to live with that guilt, that shame. Amen. Have God forgiven you? And throughout this text, throughout the Bible, I read that he forgives. Amen. Now, once again, about forgiveness, don't go back and help me somebody. That don't mean you go back and do what? Do it again. Mm -hmm. No, you stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I think that if a lot of us stop grieving the Holy Spirit, the world will be a much what? Better place. Don't you see? Amen. All right? The thing with this is that the other thing is the fact that a lot of us are still being spanked by God. Amen? You're still being whipped. You got to come out the whooping room. Amen? Brother Johnson, I don't like being in the whooping room. Amen? Because God will whoop you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, they got this thing on corporal punishment. You can't corporal punish your children now. Mm. Amen? They, won't, they don't want you to whoop them. They, they want to whoop them and kill them. That, that's what they wait. But no, you better give some some some, some discipline Amen. to your children. Amen? Amen. In confessing his sins, the Christian may be assured that on the divine side of the adjustment is immediate. Christ, as the believer intercessory, and as the one who died on the cross, has already made all the necessary adjustments. Uh, on the heavenly side. Restoration into fellowship is therefore subject only to the human adjustment of the confession of the yieldness. Amen? So, I want Christ to intercede for me, but I also need divine discipline. Mm. I need divine discipline. Amen. You need divine what? Discipline. I thank God. He said, who the Lord love it, he chases me. Yes, amen. Charlie Taylor would whoop me when I was growing up. Amen? Amen. Never one time did I thought, he abusing me. No. I knew he loved me. I just want to know why you spanking me, man. <laughs> amen? Because he wanted to show me discipline. Amen. Amen? And after he spanked me, I was mad at him. I was upset with him. <laughs> but I still loved him. Amen? amen. And that's where we are with the Lord. The Lord chastises us. We get upset. Amen. We don't like what we're dealing with or what we're going through. But we still love you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for your discipline, Lord. Amen. This is going to make a better man out of me. Amen. It's going to make a better woman out of me. It's going to make a better believer out of me. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the scripture also warns a believer against the serious results of continually grieving the Spirit. You can't continue to grieve the Holy Spirit, says Jesus. This sometimes results in God's chastening the believer in order to restore him, mm -hmm. as mentioned in Hebrews 12 and 5. Mm -hmm. The Christian is warned that if he does not judge himself, God will need to step in with a divine discipline. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 11 picks up and says, in any case, there is an immediate loss when a Christian is walking out of fellowship with God. If you're walking out of fellowship with God, you got a, you got an immediate loss. Yes, Lord. Immediate loss. Yes. And there is a constant danger and severe judgment from God as a faithful father deals with his erring children. Yes. So I want the Lord to discipline me. Yes, Amen. I need the Lord to discipline me. Amen. I don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. So that's one of the things that we are going to have to stop doing, yes. church, is Say grieving. That. And you're grieving the Spirit by not being obedient Amen. to God. 
You remember your, your parents when you didn't do what they asked, you grieved them? Remember when you got locked up, you grieved them? Amen? When you got into a fight, you grieved them. Right? When you got into an argument with other family members, you grieved grandma, didn't you? And so we have to stop that. And we can. Amen? By showing love, what? One toward another. Um, going with the bullying nowadays with the kids in school gotten terrible. Terrible. And it, it seems to me that apparently now if we know about it and hear about it, the parents know about it. Right. And they mm -hmm. should be talking to their children about right. it. Don't do this. Don't do that, right. All right. There'll be dire consequences. Right. Mm -hmm. But if they don't do it then the child will think it's okay. They're gonna think it's okay. Because they're not learning that it's wrong. So they'll keep on doing they it. They keep on doing it. And the parent is not teaching them, not talking to them about if it. If you want to find out what's wrong with little Johnny, follow him home. Mm -hmm. Amen? And you'll find out that's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. You got parents at home that haven't grew up. And so they mimic what they see. And that's what the church is. The church is a body of Christ. We are called out group. That's the church. The church is a called out group. That's, that's basically what it means. To be called what? Out. Called, be called out. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us, we're not called out, we're called in. We do, we bring in the world Come on, say that. inside of the church. Say that. And instead of we doctrinating the world, the world is doctrinating us. Because when they come in here with their doctrination, we accept it as new stuff. Oh, that's new. No, no. God has already established a doctrine for us. God has already established a principle for us. Yes, Amen. And I guarantee you that God's way will prevail. Amen. But we got to stick with it. We can't let them influence us. That's right. Be you in the world, but not what? Of the world. Amen. And so we, the Leap of Faith family, we are in the world, but we're not going to be of it. Amen. Amen. We got to be Firm in the word of God from the pulpit to the pews. Amen? Amen. So again, our theme and our thought is, first of all, we're not going to quench the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Ghost reign. Mm -hmm. Run around the church. Shout hallelujah. Amen? Let it pour out of you. Amen? Amen. And if nobody don't like it, say, hey, I'm sorry, but Amen. I got to get my praise on. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, if you want to sit there quiet, maybe that's the way you praise him. Yeah. That's okay with me. Amen? Yeah. But I'm not going to bother you, and don't you bother me. You just take off. Amen? Yeah, Lord. See? And I'm not going to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Because in grieving him, you're disobeying him. And no believer, I don't believe a Christian believer wants to grieve the Holy Spirit. Intentionally. I don't think so. I just don't believe that. No, I believe that an individual that is a Christian wants to learn how to obey God. I believe that. See? And I believe a person that is a Christian want to learn how to do right. Amen. 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 Is that all right? Amen. All right. Bless your hearts. We're going to close on that. And on next uh, Wednesday, grace be to God, we're going to pick up on walking by the Spirit as a positive command in the contrast to the previous command, which is negative. We're going to look at those, those elements, okay? Amen. Because to walk in the Spirit means being obedient when the Spirit promotes your spirit to do the will of God. Walking in the Spirit means being obedient when the Spirit promotes your spirit to do the will of God. Amen? Amen. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We look forward to you all being with us on next Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Amen. And if this message has been a blessing to you, we encourage you to come and visit us in the city of Inglewood, California, 3502 West Imperial Highway. Amen. At the Leap of Faith, 
Community Church. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.